Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I recently got in touch with an amazing food technologist, Dr. Abigail Thiel, who is a postdoctoral researcher at Wageningen University. And she also runs an educational channel on YouTube with the title, Abby the Food Scientist. We were having a casual conversation and we decided to talk about the things we wish we knew as food technology students. So Abby, let's kick this off. Tip number one, study smarter. I cannot even guess how many hours of my life I have spent studying for school. But I wasn't always studying efficiently. A lot of times I would do whatever was easiest. So I'd end up sitting back, uh, reading my notes, rereading my notes, rereading them again. Maybe I would break out a highlighter and highlight some key points. But I would study in a really passive way. And there's a growing body of research that has shown to be more efficient with your study time, you actually want to be very active in how you study. And the best way to do this is actually closing your notebook or your textbook and quizzing yourself and making yourself retrieve the information from your brain without referencing any materials. And really, this is exactly what you need to practice because that's how you need to recall the information for the exam. You need to get used to retrieving whatever material you're studying from your brain without looking back at your notes. Importance of building a network. I realized this quite late in my student life that if I don't build a strong network, it will be very challenging to build a strong career. This is something I see majority of the students missing out on. Now the counter argument to this advice is usually I'm just a student and who would want to connect with me? Who would want to network with me? The answer is that you don't have to be an expert or an overachiever in order to build a network. It all starts with adding value. The value could simply be supporting a thought leader's content on LinkedIn by leaving some meaningful comments. Now my next tip is to adopt a growth mindset. And what I mean by a growth mindset is to believe that you can learn new things, you have the ability to grow. If you make a mistake, you're gonna learn from it and become better from it. And the opposite of this growth mindset is called a fixed mindset. And so a fixed mindset means you believe you were born either smart or dumb. You don't have the ability to change your situation, to learn something new. If you have a fixed mindset, you, you believe if you failed an exam that that means you are a failure. And this is a terrible mindset to have because you do have the ability to learn things. Sure, you might have to work hard and it might not come naturally, but if you practice something every single day, of course you are going to get better at it. So switching from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset is just going to make a huge difference in your studies, but also your life. Exploring areas beyond studies. Some people might think of it as an advantage that at one point in time, I became obsessed with learning each and everything about food technology. But I think oftentimes that it's okay to go beyond your domain. You could be learning artificial intelligence and machine learning and combine those learnings with those of food technology. The intersection of different domains is where new opportunities can be explored. I suggest and I encourage you to become a T-shaped student. A T-shaped student is someone who has deep knowledge or expertise in a specific area, but also has fairly decent knowledge of other couple of domains. Moving on to tip number five. This is the idea that the first draft is a crappy draft. And I want to talk about writing because I really used to struggle with writing. Maybe if I was assigned a paper or a report for class, I would sit down at my computer, I'd be ready to type that report, and then I would actually type nothing. And I would just sit there. And in my brain, I was thinking of what sentences to write or where to start. But then I'd hear this other voice that was like, that's a bad sentence, or those words aren't right, that phrase sounds weird. And I just would sit there and instead of starting to type, I would type nothing, right? But if you know that your first draft is going to be crappy, well, then you just start typing it out. You just start putting all your ideas down. And this is actually what is more important in writing a paper. Start getting all your ideas down because then you see the structure of your paper. You can start to organize your thoughts in a certain sequence. You don't need this first draft to be perfect and it's not going to be perfect. But what helps is to get your whole draft down and then go back and you can fix those tiny things like uh, wording or phrases. 
content creation. I'm a huge advocate of producing content. Starting a YouTube channel has allowed me to access some closed doors, to meet interesting people and do collaborations with amazing people across the globe, just like this one. The only regret I have right now is that I could have started my YouTube channel even earlier so that I could have even bigger audience and I could attract even more opportunities. Now again, I get questions from students that even if I produce a content, a piece of content, who would pay attention to my content? One simple tip I want to give you is that understand your target audience. Once you understand your target audience, you can produce content according to them. And when you are producing content, you will start receiving feedback. When you post one piece of content, two pieces of content, 10, 50, 100 pieces of content, you are going to receive some feedback inevitably. And when you incorporate that feedback, maybe there is some constructive criticism. When you incorporate that into your content, it will improve eventually. All right, the last tip is to ask more questions. And this is because the people around you at university, the professors, the people that teach you are usually experts in their field. They might be known around the world for their work and what they study. And I did not realize that when I was at university and I wish I would have taken advantage of their knowledge and all their experiences and tried to learn even more from them because there's not many times in your life you are going to be just surrounded by experts in the field of food. Thank you so much, Abby, for sharing these amazing lessons. I am sure, I am confident that the students and the viewers who are watching this video right now have gained massive value from our video. And please do check out Abby's channel. I will leave a link to her YouTube channel down in the description. She is creating amazing content around food science. And I will see you next time. Class dismissed.